All right, welcome back to another day of e-learning. Um, what I'm going to do for you today is I'm going to show you um, your output page that we would have done in person had we been here. So I'm going to view my screen in full screen for you. Okay, so this is going to be your output page for topic two. And the way that this is going to work using my stylus, teachers have new fancy um, technology, uh, the first thing you're going to do on your output page for number one is name two differences between passive and active transport. And then for this, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to draw arrows illustrating which way the molecules would move depending on what type of transport they're going through. So let me turn on the actual pen real quick. Um, we'll just write in black. We'll go back to full screen. Okay, so if the circle moves through diffusion, we have to remember that diffusion is when things go from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So what you're going to have to do is figure out, okay, where are the circles more highly concentrated and where are the circles less highly concentrated. If you look inside the cell, there's more circles inside the cell than there are outside the cell. So the circles then, why won't this circle? Really? Hold on, stand by. I might just have to do it this way, which is fine. Um, the circles are going to travel via diffusion. And they're just going to be able to travel across the membrane just because they are traveling through diffusion. We don't need a transport protein. We don't need any of that because it is not facilitated diffusion. Now if you look, the star moves through facilitated diffusion. So it's going to be almost the same, right? Only this time, we are still going from high to low and it's not going to require any energy. So we need to pay attention to how the star is going to get across the membrane. Well, remember, because it's facilitated diffusion, the star is going to have to go through a transport protein. Okay, So it's going to have to go through a transport protein in order to get across the cell membrane. Okay, Now, the last one... The triangle moves through active transport. Okay, so active transport, remember, these two are passive transport. This one is active transport, right? So active transport, remember, that is going to require ATP, or energy, right? So. If I'm going from low to high concentration, I need to look as to where my triangles are at their lowest concentration, and I'm going to have to force them through the membrane to an area of high concentration. So my area of low concentration of triangles is going to be inside the cell again, right? So inside the cell, I have an area of low concentration. So I'm going to have to take my triangle and I'm going to have to use the transport protein again for it to be forced against the concentration gradient to an area of high concentration. So on your own, when you're naming two differences between passive and active transport, use that knowledge to answer the questions below. Now, what I would do on your output page if I were you is draw a quick little membrane. These are the phospholipids that I've been talking about, these little bobby pin looking things. Okay. So if you're wondering what those are, that is what the actual structure of your cell membrane looks like. If you have any questions, please let me know.